there's a fire starting in my heart reaching the fever pitch is bringing me out the dark finally i can see you crystal clear go ahead and sell me out and i'll lay your ship bare see how i live with every piece of you don't underestimate the things that i will do this upcoming solar eclipse on August 21st really has the Flat Earth community buzzing. <laughs> it also has the globe heads frantically trying to justify the ball. Um, like I stated in my apology video to five red pairs, scale matters, and as far as I can tell, it is mechanically possible um, with relation to speed and distance. So uh, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Um, this does not mean that I believe the eclipse works um, the way the heliocentric model claims it does. But I do agree that there is a mathematical explanation uh, that appears valid. So, a wise man once said, Next time I think I've got that gotcha globe killer, I would do a challenge video. This way, if someone showed me, then great. Number one, I learned. Number two, people watching would learn. And number three, I could just delete the challenge video and move on. So that's exactly what this video is. It's a challenge, okay? I'm not a rich man and I work hard for what little money I have. Um, I also am not 100% sure that uh, it is not possible to recreate such a shadow as NASA depicts in their diagrams uh, using a single radiant light source and a ball. Therefore, I will not be wagering any money, um, or this is not a bet for anyone who is successful. Uh, however, the person who is successful will have the notoriety of being the first. Um, if someone is successful, I will be the first channel to mirror the video that shows the solar eclipse umbra as represented by NASA. Uh, I will recant my challenge and I will remove this video from my channel. Um, at the end of this video, I will show you a challenge that will pay you $5,000. I recommend for everyone to watch Mr. Thrive and Survive's new video called The Moon is Only 70 Miles Wide. Okay, he makes a good point in that video that if the light that hits the Earth is anything but 90 degrees to the Earth, as is claimed by science, then the entire globe model falls apart, okay, starting with the seasons. Um, let's watch a few clips from his video and uh, then we'll see what we can find on the internet about shadows. To try to make it as simple as possible, it really boils down to how fast the Earth is spinning and how fast the Moon is orbiting around it. The Moon is orbiting about twice as fast as this, the Earth is spinning. Here you have a high-level scientist from NASA, Goddard Space Center in Maryland, tell you directly that the Moon is orbiting twice as fast as the Earth is spinning. The moon is moving twice as fast as the earth is spinning, correct? Isn't that what he just said? That means, think about this, that means the moon should rise and set two times for every time the sun rises and sets. It's moving twice as fast as the earth is spinning, right? It's already twice as fast. That means you would, whenever you see the moon in the sky, it should be moving twice as fast across the sky as the sun. What causes the sun to move across the sky according to their model? The speed of the rotation of the earth. So if the moon is going twice as fast as that, then it should loop the sun. It should lap the sun, I should say. It should lap the sun once every day. There's no way around this, people. This is what he's telling you. Why is he telling you this? Because this is the only way to explain the eclipse. It's the only way to explain why the shadow moves from west to east. The moon has to move twice as fast as the earth spins. We're going to shift gears big time now. Now let's look at something here. Before we go on a little bit of a review okay guys when you get into different classes in college and different things like that and you're trying to study the model that they want to present to you everything is presented with 90 degree angle rays coming from the Sun to the earth this has to be geometry forces nearly 90 degree 
perpendicular sun rays striking the earth all the time. When you get into these kind of things, you're going to do things uh, like computing angle of incidence, whereas like in the Tropic of Cancer, in the summer, on the first day of summer, at 23.5 degrees north, your angle of incidence of the sun's rays is zero. How do you get that? Because the sun is directly above 23.5 degrees north. If you're on that line, 23.5 degrees north, your angle of incidence is said to be zero. Why? Because you have perpendicular sun rays at that point on the earth, meaning they're striking at 90 degrees. All kind of different things are computed and done with this thing, guys. I'm not getting into it right now deeply, but all kind of things in science fall apart if these sun rays ever do not strike the earth at 90 degrees. The seasons get messed up for one big time. This is their model. You have to have this be this way. Otherwise, it falls apart. How many pictures do I have to show you in textbooks and others that show you that the sun rays are coming in at 90 degrees and that the seasons like up here it's cooler because of the angle of the earth is tilted away that's why they say it's colder up here than down here but as you notice no matter where you are the, the rays are coming in perpendicular you have to calculate this when you're in these classes and come up with your angle of incidence and things like that this is what makes their model tick and work Here's another one. Ask yourself, are these coming in at 90 degrees no matter where you are on the earth? If all of a sudden one crossed, wouldn't that screw it up? How could you have ever figure out your angle of incidence anywhere on the earth if they came in any other way other than 90 degrees? You could not do it. Here's another one. One more. There you go. They're all coming in. All right. Oh. Near the equator, the sun's rays hit directly. That's only possible if they're coming in at 90 degrees. Otherwise, you could have them hit directly up here because they're coming in at all kinds of angles. Correct? So why do we have this? Why do we have this? We have this because their model falls apart when it comes to eclipses. The lie is exposed. Heavy stuff. So with that in mind, uh, let's have a look at what I found regarding the nature of shadows when I Google it. So this diagram shows a pin source of light and only an umbra is created. Um, there is no penumbra. Uh, a globe believer might say the sun looks bigger uh, than a point source of light. And I will agree. Um, it looks more like a disc from our perspective. So right below that diagram, I find this. This looks natural. It's exactly what we would expect to see from a shadow, just like the results uh, from this little experiment with a single light source. Now, I'm going to take some flack in the comments section uh, with people saying, you know, I didn't use this kind of light or I didn't use that kind of light. Well, you know, save your breath, okay? The light from a bulb is a radiant light like any other, okay? It only lacks intensity by comparison to the sun. Uh, radiant is radiant. Um, if the light that radiates from a sphere travels out in all directions, then by nature, all the light rays leaving that one source are divergent rays of light. It's that simple. They are not convergent light rays. They are divergent light rays. That means at no point in space will those rays of light intersect. Ever. Okay. Divergent, not convergent. We are taught to believe that, you know, that it, it's simply the vast distances that make all of the light rays more or less parallel to the Earth. You know, but by that logic, the light rays are still technically divergent. So, yeah, it's ridiculous, the argument. Anyways, here's how a shadow behaves when uh, light rays are parallel. Notice that at no point does the umber get smaller than the ball. Yet NASA would have us believe that the umber is so focused that when it contacts the Earth's surface, the shadow is only you know, 100 miles or so across. It's tiny. You know? Well, as far as I can tell, 
all of the tests and studies by physics sites all over the internet um, all tell the same story when it comes to the nature of light and shadows. Okay, light from a pin source all the way up to parallel light rays clearly show that the umber never gets smaller. Okay? This is what we see in the natural world. End of story. So it's around this time the globe heads start with, but, but, but science, okay, save it. I just showed you the science, okay? The challenge is to prove it wrong. This way we both learn something, okay? I tried to prove it wrong and I failed miserably. <laughs> Imagine that, huh? Me, a flat earther, trying to prove the physics of shadows wrong in defense of NASA. <laughs> Anyways, I found two ways to recreate the NASA version of the Umbra. I found this little experiment that was done by a university. Uh, I think the picture speaks for itself. The light source, the moon, uh, and the globe, all in line, and the shadow is as natural as it could be. But, introduce a lens to manipulate the light, and the shadow changes. Actually, two lenses. Uh, one is directly uh, in front of the light, and one big one between the light and the moon. I found another way to make a pointed shadow as well. Um, <laughs> maybe I'll save that for another video, huh? Nah, I'm a spoiler all the way. Um, nothing more than a ring light, okay? But it doesn't count for the challenge. Uh, it's a multi-directional light, and it's way bigger than the ball making the shadow. Okay, so I better put a patent on this before NASA installs one behind the moon. Well, I guess you will have to decide for yourself Will you trust NASA, the people that have been busted for faking things like this? And this. And this. Or will you trust the physics department of every university in every country that offer us this? And this. And this. Okay, let's get back to that $5,000 NASA challenge I mentioned earlier. A YouTube channel called The Morgyle put out a $5,000 NASA Eclipse challenge on YouTube and Facebook. I will link his video in the description. Um, to sum it up quickly, NASA documents regarding solar eclipses uh, proves conclusively that the Earth is not a globe. So uh, go watch for yourselves. <laughs>